This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to The 1000 Authors Show. I'm Vicky Fraser, and this is my lovely husband, Joe, who is often not wrong at all. Hello. Hello. Often not wrong. (laughs) But when it comes to pickled eggs, you're wronger than a very wrong thing. I'm not. Yes. Pickled eggs are amazing, and anybody who thinks pickled eggs are wrong has just not met the right pickled egg yet. I don't want to meet any pickled eggs ever. I'm just putting it out there. If anybody would like to endorse the pickled egg, you know, email in. Don't email me about pickled eggs. Email Vicky about pickled eggs. Don't don't email me about pickled eggs. (laughs) Um... I mean, you can, but I'm going to delete them. No. I'm going to cancel the pickled eggs. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, um, today we're drinking... Oh, I'm drinking water. I got nothing. I got got nothing. nothing. I'm woefully unprepared. Uh, I got nothing. We should stop telling people what we're drinking then, because I don't drink anymore and you don't... Prepare. Drink. Yeah. (laughs) So what are you reading at the moment, Joe? Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm reading an Ursula... K. Le Guin Ooh. thing That's that not was what I've got down. on my Kindle. Uh, no, I finished New Romancer by William, William Gibson. Fair. Um, I had said that last time, I think. You were reading Some Kids I Taught and What They Taught Me. I did. I finished reading Some Kids I Taught and What They Taught Me, which was <laughs> lovely. Wasn't it great? Really good book. Really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Enjoyed it. Interesting. Mm. Insights into education. Very good. Yeah. Um, and now I'm reading an Ursula K. Le Guin thing whose name I can't remember. Cool. Whose title I can't remember. Yeah. Well, she's great though. Yes. So it's going to be a good book. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm reading, I'm still reading all of the same things. I'm not reading it. That's not because reading. you read 15 books at once. Yeah. I sh- maybe you should just read one at a time. Mm, do you think? <laughs> but that's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. So, yeah, we're not going to... We'll come back next week. And you still haven't finished Bus Driver Who Wanted to Be God. No, but I'm, that's a book of short stories, though, and I am legitimately dipping in and out of that. It's a very small book. I'm legitimately dipping in and out of it. I think you're lacking commitment. No, dipping in and out. Mm. And, yeah, I'm still reading The Secret Lives of Colour by Cassia St. Clair, which is, again, it's a kind of dip in and out book. I think that's why I'm, I'm struggling to kind of sit there and get into it, mm. because it's, it's a dip... It's very good. But each of them it's is really like a, a story per chapter. Yeah, it's, and it's not, no, it's not even that. It's like several stories per chapter. So you've mm. got like red and then you've got like vermilion and scarlet and all of Yeah, so yeah, it's a good book though. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. So I'll have more interesting books to share <laughs> next week. Oh no, no, actually not the week after next. Week after next. Which yeah. books are you going to finish before the week after next? All of the ones that are on this list. All of the ones on that list. Right. Look forward to different books next time. Two weeks time, there will be different things. Anyway, um, so what have I been doing? I've been, I've had, I've got a headache. Really? Yeah, I've got an actual headache. I've actually got a headache. Um, today's been a really good day. I've got a lot of things done, good. including doing something that I really didn't want to do because it's way out of my comfort zone. What was that? I posted on Instagram. That's not way out of my comfort zone. I do that all the time. But I did a, I'm doing um I'm doing a, an Instagram um, course thing and my coach, Hilary, hi Hilary. Hi Hilary. Um, told me to do some stuff. So I've, I've done stuff, but I've done, a, I've done stories. I've done stories on Instagram and I did a video on Instagram and then I broke it up into little bits and I put little captions on it and um, just wanted to set fire to the entire world after that. Okay. But I'm also very proud of myself for doing it because it's not the kind of thing that I do. So okay. we'll see if that does I- stuff. I really struggle with Instagram. I can't use it. It's, it's a problem. Because all the people I know on Instagram are like pole dancers. And, you know, whilst they're good friends of mine, as soon as I go, well, they're a friend of mine, Instagram goes, oh, you like pole dancers, do you? And suddenly the whole of Instagram just fills up with people I don't know on a pole. Which, you know, is all right, but it makes me look a bit creepy. It does. <laughs> so yes, anyway, 
Uh, thank you for that um, derailing of, of my achievement with your man experience. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Like that, is it? <laughs> Back to, um, oh, okay, so before we go on to today's topic, which is, um, are you just trying to fit it in, which is not an innuendo of any kind, um, I would like to put a question out there to any gardeners, any gardeners who are listening to this podcast, um, not because of the demise of Colin the cactus, who is behind Joe right now, I think I've killed my cactus, I think he's rotting, he's rotting from the inside out, he's, he's basically a bag of mush. And I've, a couple of people have helped me on Facebook, but I've just read a little bit more and I think he might be beyond help. You've, you've killed him. I think I have. I feel really bad. Um, like, literally, how do you kill a cactus? It's the easiest thing to keep. Anyway. I'm sorry, Colin. Rotting. It is a thing. I'm, anyway. Anyway. Gardeners. Okay, so I have felt, um, I've beaten myself up about many things this year, as I'm sure a lot of people have, because, you know, 2020 bullshit. Um, but one of the things that I thought I would be better at was gardening, my vegetable garden. Mm-hmm. And we did have a really great ra- um, tomato crop. Mm-hmm. Red, I was thinking red things. I almost said strawberry, then I almost said raspberry, and then I was like, no, they're red and round. What are they? Tomatoes. <laughs> Long day, huh? <laughs> oh, and she's gone. <laughs> Tomatoes. Um, yeah. And the tomatoes did well and the courgettes did very well. Courgettes, marrows. Leeks and onions did very well. Although I don't know how to store my onions. If anyone can help me out with storing onions, because they were rotted. Oh, I did gosh, I did gosh. what the internet told me to do. It didn't work. Did not work. I wonder if that's because the garage leaks. It could be. Mm. Anyway, my thought was I have a lot of gardening books, right? Um, and they're very good. They're very good gardening books. I've got gardening books by Carol Klein and like Monty Don and people like that. <laughs> and organic gardening books and blah. They are all very general and they all give me like 53 options and vegetables. And I'm like, oh, I want to grow all of these vegetables. And then I don't really. We don't really want to grow that many vegetables because no. we have, you know, vegetables that we like to eat. And then we have vegetables that are easy to grow. <laughs> sometimes those two things cross in a Venn diagram of beauty. But um, sometimes it's kale. And no, kale can... Get in the bin. Easy frankly. to grow. Nobody wants it. <laughs> no, I know that I'm going to get people hating me now. It's like kale is amazing. Yes, I know kale can be amazing, but when I cook kale, it's just bad. I don't like it. You either have mush or woody bits. Yeah. And like, I love it when you can put kale in oil and salt and then you fry it. And, but I feel like that negates the whole point of kale. It's like kale's supposed to be good for you. And then I drench it in salt and oil and like put it in the oven or the fryer and it's like that's no longer good for you (laughs) no matter what you do with it is is basically salt and oil which (laughs) i love but i can do that by eating crisps okay so so what i would like (laughs) and what i need is for somebody who knows what they're talking about with vegetables to get on zoom with me for an hour and i will pay for this right get on zoom with me for an hour find out what i like to eat what i like to grow how much space i've got how much time i've got and then realistically how much time i'm willing to spend on this and those two things are not the same (laughs) and tell me exactly what to plant and when to plant it like i literally need an idiot proof kind of blow by blow, day by day, this is what to do throughout the year to have a productive vegetable garden that we will actually eat. This week, spend your two hours doing this, this and this. Exactly. And like, I want to be able to have different crops of... um... Vegetables? Onions, tomatoes, (laughs) all of the things, like lettuces and things. (laughs) 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 Should we just start again? All of the vegetables... All of the vegetables. I'd also like to grow potatoes because Ugh. Joe, yeah, but Joe doesn't like me growing potatoes because he thinks it's a waste of space. But I, and I get that, but I really love, like, it's like digging up treasure when you pull your potatoes up. It's really nice. Anyway, fruits and vegetables. So, and the thing is, like, I can't afford to get, get on the blower with Monty Don for an hour or Carol Klein for whatever they would charge to do such a thing, if indeed they do do such a thing. But if there was like a gardener who was writing a book of their own for their business, and if only you knew somebody who could help you do that, 
right? But if you had written, <laughs> don't look like that. If you if you had written a book on gardening, then I could. And the call to action in it was, oh, book an hour's you know consultation with me here, and it costs like two hundred quid or whatever. And yes, I would pay two hundred pounds for that sort of consultation. If you're thinking nobody will ever pay that, it's like hi, I would. Hello. Um, and that's the call to action from the book, because you can write a book that's quite general. But what I need is for somebody to talk to me and go, OK, well, you like these vegetables. You've got this much time, blah, blah, blah. You've got this much space. Here's your new calendar. Here is your personalised calendar. Because what happens is, and I know what you might be thinking, you might be thinking, but these books that you that you have in your bookshelf have calendars. Yes, they do. But what happens is that I am like, I'm going to grow all of these 53 vegetables and then I grow none of them and they rot. Mm -hmm. So this is this is a thing. This is an idea for you. It's a tiny idea for you. Go and do that. Go do that. And this can be applied to pretty much any business. It doesn't, you know, it's not just about gardeners. It can be applied to pretty much any business. Anybody who wants to do something on their own at home, but doesn't have, you know, the skills, focus or attention span <laughs> to, to figure it out for themselves or time, then, you know, we, we need help. So I hope that that is, you know, even if you're not a gardener, even if you do something else, that's a really cool service that you could offer and that you could sell at the end of your book. Nice. And if you write a book, then I am much more likely to, you know, to, to kind of stumble across you and be like, oh, this person is offering this really cool thing and I want to go and talk to them about it instead of just somebody landing in my DMs. Having said that, if you're listening to this and you can help me, land in my DMs, please, and pitch <laughs> me because I, I do, I genuinely do need help with my gardening. And I, I need, it, and I don't just need general help. If you pitch me, if you like land in my DMs and you're like, oh, you can just do this and this, I'm going to be like, no, no, no. I need you to treat me like a, like a total toddler. Spoon feed you vegetables. Spoon feed me vegetables, yeah. <laughs> anyway, on to what we're talking about this week, which is related to the title, Are You Just Fitting It In? Okay. Are you? Are you just fitting it in? Because my question is, why do we find it so hard to write or to, in fact, to do anything that we really want to do for ourselves? I think it's because quite often there are more urgent things. Exactly. The answer is because we try to fit everything in, because we try to fit that thing, because we try to fit writing in between everything else. And as business owners, we're really busy. Even non-business owners, I'm told, are quite busy sometimes. I don't know. Is that true? Quite busy sometimes. Yeah. Uh, there's always, it doesn't matter what we're doing, there's always something else that seems more important, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, it, more urgent. That's more the thing. Urgent. If I, if I, yeah, there's, for me... Well, people but, confuse urgent and important. Exactly. There's there's like, there's a, there's a chance, isn't there, with urgent mm -hmm. and important. And, and you know, you should be doing the important things that aren't urgent. But everybody spends their time doing the urgent things that aren't important. I don't know. I hope, I hope they spend their time doing the urgent things that are important. Well, yeah, you pick those as, as... Like car insurance. Yeah, you do them before you do the urgent but not important. But if somebody's going, ah, I need this now, even if like your whole business strategy is do something else, you still stop the business strategy and do this thing because it's urgent. I'm making this face, by the way, because Joe quite often tells me he hasn't got anything done because he's spent the day doing things because people have come up to him going, ah, this thing's on fire. And I'm like, if you just ignored them, they would fix it themselves. The fire would get bigger. It wouldn't. They would fix it themselves. You train them to come running at you with their fire. Anyway, anyway, so, but that actually is a lesson for business owners as well. If you respond to every urgent, urgent message that you get, that's like, ah, oh, my thing's on fire and I need you to fix it for me, even though you haven't broken it. Um, if you reply to it instantly, that's all you will get all the time from everybody in your life because you have trained them that you are going to, you know, jump to their... Mm -hmm. to their shrieks. If, on the other hand, you don't even see it, which is the best thing, you, ignoring it's difficult, I get that, but if you don't even see it for two hours, chances are you'll have a, a follow-up email from them being like, oh, it's okay, I've sorted it. Because people gen generally do sort their own shit out. <laughs> they just do. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be there to help your clients. Of course you should. But those like hair on fire, urgent emails that you get are usually a knee-jerk reaction to something that they can actually fix themselves, but they haven't got around to thinking about it yet because they're too busy knee-jerk reaction panicking to it. Does that make sense? It kind of makes sense. It's true. I mean, sometimes it'll still be on fire, at which point you can jump in and help them. <laughs> but give them a chance to fix it themselves first. Anyway, we have digressed a little bit, so let's... Yeah, you woman's blamed there quite nicely. Thanks. That's not a thing. Shut up. It's not a thing. <laughs> um, so yes, anyway, 
We tend to try and just fit things in and there's always something that seems more important or more urgent. So there are three reasons why we tend to just try and fit writing in around everything else. I'm talking specifically about writing here because that's what I do. Reason the first, we don't schedule dedicated time to write and do work that matters to us. It's true. Okay. We're like, oh, I need to write this thing today. I'm gonna, I've got all these other things to do, so I'm just gonna do it later at the end of the day. At which point you get like Alexa making a stupid noise at you. Oh, I thought she was gonna go off then because I said her name. Um, you get her making a stupid noise at you and um, your husband on the other end of it going, dinner is ready, alert. Dinner is ready. And I'm like, oh, balls. I still haven't written the article I was gonna write and now it's dinner time and so, the day ends and I still have not written the thing that I wanted to write. Because there's never time at the end of the day. No. Never. Never time at the end of the day. And that says a lot about how highly you value your writing time and your writing skills and your writing, you know, mm -hmm. motivation as well. So that's reason the first. Reason the second. This is a big one, I think. Would you like to read it out? Uh, we feel guilty about spending time writing when we should be doing other stuff in our business or in our lives. Yes. This is particularly true for mums, I think. All right. Because mums are always doing everything for everybody else, especially their kids. Mm -hmm. And they feel, they genuinely feel guilty. Like, oh, I shouldn't, you know, I should put everybody else first and I come last. And by the time that happens, you're knackered and you're in bed and you feel guilty. And it's not just like I'm like specifically sending a big hug to mums right now, but it's not just mums. It's particularly women as well. And then next down the list, kind of somewhere down there, men. Because I don't, th I genuinely don't think men feel the, the same level of guilt spending time, time on themselves. Yeah, spending time on themselves. Do you ever feel guilty for doing the things that you want to do? Unless, like, I'm not counting the times when I'm standing there yelling at you for not doing something, <laughs> <laughs> or like passive aggressively hoovering by your face. Past me. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, you don't. No. I just don't. No, and I don't think most. I, I don't think most men do. I genuinely don't. And so I'm talking specifically to women and mums here, but yeah, we, we don't schedule dedicated time to write. Um, and we don't, we, we feel guilty when we feel like we should be doing other stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I could, I could, like, I've got a book that I've been wanting to write for. It's just a silly book. It's called Language Lessons Nobody Asked For. And I've got people asking me to write this book. And I have not done anything with it for ages because I feel guilty because I'm like, oh, I could sit down and do this at lunchtime and it'd be quite fun. But I'm like, nah, the laundry needs putting out or I need to go and clean the chickens out or I could like, I should be doing something in my business instead. You know, I should be doing this article or that social media post or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just, we, it's, it, we feel guilty and we shouldn't. It's like, why do we feel guilty about doing stuff like this for ourselves? If it's important to us, it's like, if it's really important to us personally, that somehow becomes a thing that's an indulgence. Yeah. And it's like, how fucked up is that? It lowers its priority. Yeah. It's only you who wants it. Yeah. And how fucked up is that? It's really fucked up. So that's the second reason that we tend to not schedule time in to write for ourselves. And third reason, reason the third, is there is no accountability. When we are working for ourselves, it's easier to let ourselves off the hook. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to come looking for it. Nobody's going to come looking for it. And whilst we are harder on ourselves than anybody else is, we also let ourselves off the hook on stuff like that much easier, I think, than than other people would. It's like you're not gonna you're not gonna flake out on a client, right? Of course, you're not gonna flake out on a client. So why would you flake out on yourself? That's. I just want you to think about that. If this is one of the reasons that you know you don't you don't get your writing done, I really I don't want people to get to the end of another day and think I still haven't done the thing that I wanted to do mm -hmm. and have it happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day because it compounds this this and then we feel guilty about that and well, the more you do it the more used you become to doing it yeah the more used you become to treating yourself like a second rate you know whatever yeah that's not a priority that's not a priority and you know this uh, I hope everybody is kind of listening to this and thinking oh it's not just about writing it's about everything yeah damn right it's about everything is you know this is not just about writing this mm. is really important and it, there should, and I'm, I'm not kind of advocating for there's been a lot of talk about self-care and you have to make self-care your number one priority and all the rest of it and i'm like actually i think the world would be a better place if we all looked out for other people a little bit more um but you can't you know there's a bit of a cheesy saying you can't serve from an empty cup <laughs> you can't you can't do it i would like to say you can't pour from an empty teapot okay you can say that thanks Thank you. 
So yes, um, it's, it's super important. We need to prioritize ourselves and the things that are important to us. Mm-hmm. At least as important as doing things for other people. Okay. So that, that is my... Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all of this stuff, like... You know, we don't get the stuff done that we want to do. We find it really hard to get started. We find it really hard to get finished. We find it really hard to just sit down and bloody write. Um, and we try and fit it in around everything else, which we now know does not work. And it's really easy to fix. So shall, shall we tell them how to fix it? I think we should. Do you think? I think. Cool. Do you want to give them the first way? So, step one, become your own best client and book writing time into your calendar, just as if you were going to do the work for somebody else. And like you said earlier, you wouldn't flake out on a client, so why would you flake out on yourself? Exactly. Like, literally book it into your calendar. Even if it's only 20 minutes a day. I would love it to be an hour a day, but, you know, I'm not going to have a hissy fit if it's... Even if it's only 10 minutes, book the time in. And make it important. Make it important. That is the important time. Yeah. Make it so, like, unless something is actually on fire in your house, you are not disturbed for that time. Talk to your partner and your children about it and be like, no, I'm having this this little piece of time here is just for me <laughs> and I'm going to use it. Thing the second that you can do, find somebody who will hold you accountable and make sure they actually hold you accountable. So <laughs> maybe it's a case of you have a chat with your best mate and you're like, I'm going to text you at 11 o'clock every morning after I have done my 20 minutes or an hour or whatever of writing and then text them. Mm-hmm. And if you don't text them, then they get to phone you up and shout at you. Maybe not shout at you because it's your best mate. They're probably yeah, not shouting. A little, little bit of accountability with somebody. Yeah. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. And Joe does this for me sometimes. If I'm like, I've spent all day sitting on the floor instead of doing the thing that I need to do. And Joe will be like, send it to me by 5 p.m. Yeah. Or you're not having any dinner. Which is you, actually a genuine threat because I don't cook. And you genuinely usually get it to me somewhere near 5 p.m. Yeah, because I'm motivated by food. Mm-hmm. Um, and thing the third, really the most important thing. Would make, you like to be make it a habit. Make it a habit. Make it a habit. If you do it at the same time every day, it'll feel weird when you miss it. Yeah, so like if you ever forget to brush your teeth and you get halfway through the day and you're like, why does my mouth taste like something's crawled into it and died? Mm. It's like, oh, I forgot to brush my teeth. How gross is that? Like, I never do that. I never forget to brush my teeth. Of course not. Of course not. I don't. Sometimes I do forget to put on pants. And I'll get halfway through the day and I'll be like, something's weird. Why is it weird? I have no pants on. That's why. Hmm. I guess I guess if you're just on, on Zoom calls and things, it doesn't matter so much. I don't mean like I'm naked from the waist down. All oh, right. You'd notice that faster. I would, yes, I would notice that faster. Okay. Because I would have had to have walked from the house to the garden. Yeah. To my office. Yeah. I think other people would have noticed that as well. Although maybe not. Depends what time. Um, I definitely would have noticed this morning it was really cold. Mm. So, yes, make it a habit. Make it so that if you don't do your writing, it feels weird and you feel wrong and you feel like things are all weird and scratchy. Mm. And what's the book for habits? My book. Your book. Mm. I mean, no, there is an amazing book on habits, but I'm just going to plug my book first. Okay. (laughs) Which is How the Hell Do You Write a Book, which is available on Amazon and from my website. Cool. And also my Mindle, which is... Banish the Blank Page of Doom. Mm-hmm. Fast. Get started. Also available on Amazon. Not from my website. But the book that Joe meant, because he likes to plug other people's books, is... <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, that's reasonable, though. Is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Cool. Which is an awesome book. So, yeah. Um, what's the takeaway, Joe? Uh, make time to write um, and join Team Moxie. Right now. Right. Join it right now, because right now. the price will absolutely have gone up by Tuesday morning. Crikey. Okay. I know. I'm doing a launch. Doing a launch. Doing a launch and a special offer. And yes, join Team Moxie. Come join us for an hour every morning. And I'm putting on lunchtime sessions as well from definitely from January, maybe a couple in December as well, depending how I go. And that gets you a habit. It gets you accountability. It gets you... Protected time. Protected time. It gets gets you a library of dozens and dozens of writing uh, tips and information and little tiny masterclasses and Q&As. It gets you a monthly Q&A call with me and the rest of the team. So you can ask anything about writing and self-publishing and stuff like that and books. It gets you guest teachings every now and then. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get guest experts in to teach. It gets all sorts of other things as well. 
Oh, you get the recording. You get the recording of the session. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's really, really bloody good value. And talking about uh, the power hour. This, you can't see this if you're just listening to the podcast. I'm holding up a little book by one of Team Moxie, Tam Wilson, the collie coach, who joined my power hour at the end of July and spent the next two months writing her first ever book, Collie Chaos to Calm, a guide to helping your chaotic collie become a calmer canine. Nice. And she's written this little book and it's fantastic. Um, it's, well, I don't own a collie, but I know people who do. And so I've been kind of shouting about this. And there's lots of good testimonials in it. She produced this little book in two, basically two months. She wrote it in August, the September and October. And then she spent most of October and November kind of editing it and getting it ready. Mm -hmm. And it's now available on Amazon. It now exists as a thing out there because she joined the Power Hour and did it. Yeah. And it is like, normally I'm like, oh, people have just done the work by themselves. And they absolutely didn't. Like Tam did all of this by herself. But she has said to me she would not have done this if it hadn't been for the Power Hour. Cool. And that just makes me really, really happy. And I'm going to read out what she has written. She's written a lovely little thank you section. And she wrote, thank you to Vicky Fraser for... Oh, I can't read it. You read it. I feel like a dick. <laughs> thank you to Vicky Fraser for being a positive and sunshiny presence in my life. Your writing power hours have transformed how I work and the group of people you attract are all amazing. Yeah. That brings up another thing about the power hours, the networking opportunities. The cool people. The cool people. One of the things that I am genuinely really good at is connecting people, hmm. bringing people together. And this group of people in, this, in Team Moxie are awesome. And so if you think that you would like to be an awesome person in Team Moxie, come and join us. Come and join us. The link is in the show notes. You can go to um, moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash power hour. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Actually, that's probably not even the right URL. Check the show notes. Check the show notes. Yeah. Um, coming up next week, I'm interviewing Laura fucking Belgray, which is really cool. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. Um, that's very exciting so yeah tune in next week because Laura Belgray and I are talking about books being funny and making money with um, making money like uh, that was a terrible introduction I'm so sorry Laura <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good interview I really enjoyed it cool yeah we, we talk about all manner of things including why you don't have to be making a bazillion quid at the age of 22 and you know to those young upstarts yeah yeah Okay. I think we're done. I think we'd better be done. I think we're out. I think I'd better shut up. All right. Thank you for that. No worries. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, if you've listened to every episode, email me with your postal address and I'll send you a special super fan gift. Um, go follow me on Instagram at Tiny Beetle Steps because I've got I'm putting all sorts of stuff out there about um, my offer for mm-hmm. Team Moxie. So you can come and see if you think it's for you. Um, if you liked this podcast, go and subscribe on iTunes, please. It helps us cr- climb the rankings. Leave us a review and a rating. Five stars. Five stars. Um, and share it. If you know somebody who will enjoy this nonsense, send them to moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast. Nice. We'll be back. I'll be back with Laura same time next week. Joe will be back in two weeks. Don't forget to send us those emails about pickled eggs. Don't email me about pickled eggs. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. Mm-hmm.